Do not kid yourself. What this is all about is shutting down conservative media. That's what this is all about. Shutting down any and all political opposition. That's what the objective of the left and the Democrats is. Criminalizing policy differences, at least when they differ from the Democrat agenda. One of the more disturbing things about this incident is that someday the left will finally get their wish. Somebody who really can be identified as a conservative is going to commit some terrible atrocity. Now, it already happens. The leftists already do it, and nobody cares. Lee Harvey Oswald was a leftist. Timothy McVeigh. You know, Clinton talks all on and 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 on about uh, uh, talk radio, the, the angry voices on the radio, and that led to uh, the Oklahoma City bombing. That's not at all what led to the Oklahoma City bombing. McVeigh has said what led to the Oklahoma City bombing, and that was the Waco invasion. McVeigh claimed the bombing was revenge for what the U.S. government did at Waco and at Ruby Ridge. McVeigh was, he visited Waco during the standoff. He spoke to a news reporter about his anger over what was happening there. So the perp himself said why he did it. So how come Clinton nor Janet Reno got any blame for McVeigh's actions? He himself said that their actions motivated him. Janet Reno led the Waco invasion, the Branch Davidian compound. It burned it to the ground. Kids died. It was a government, government-led government effort to protect the children. And, and Ruby Ridge, McVeigh, was ticked off at both of them. He said so. And yet somehow, to this day, to this day, Oklahoma City was, this, the, uh, as far as the media is concerned, was the result of angry voices on the right. And now this. So, what's going to happen? If every large group of people contains some mentally unstable members. Folks, as I mentioned in the first hour of the program, we had two different artists, a movie maker and an author, do a movie and books on assassinating George W. Bush. There was no condemnation. There was only a... Um, a request that we not overreact, we be restrained. Art, but we should try to understand the rage that drove these people, because they were artists. So the left already has their guilty. Lee Harvey Oswald came back from Moscow as a communist, blows away John F. Kennedy. Um, Sirhan Sirhan, Robert Kennedy, leftist. James Earl Ray, if anything, a leftist, assassin of uh, Martin Luther King. It's not right-wingers doing any of this. But even after JFK, they tried to say that the, the, the uh, unstable conservatives of Dallas got together and assassinated the president. There was no such thing. It was a communist-trained former Marine sharpshooter, Lee Harvey Oswald. Every large group contains some mentally unstable members. So statistically, it's inevitable that somebody identifiably is going to commit some atrocity. Now, when that happens, all the government machinery will be in place to take away as many political freedoms as the left can manage. That's the objective. And every time there is an event like this, they give it a trial run. They trot out the narratives and the templates, and they say it was Sarah Palin, whoever. You know, uh, two years ago, would they have said this was Sarah Palin? No, whoever they think is the biggest threat of the moment is who's responsible for this. Sarah Palin. When I heard over the weekend Sarah Palin, I mean, almost started laughing. How utterly irresponsible and predictable Sarah Palin responsible for murder? They say Sarah Palin's too stupid to put two sentences together. Now, all of a sudden, Sarah Palin has all this ability at mind control. Sarah Palin? Talk radio? People ought to be dropping like flies if that's the case. I mean, I'm in my 23rd year here, folks. People ought to be dropping like flies, but they're not. These are isolated incidents. 
and in practically every one of them, you're dealing with somebody who's insane or deranged or a schizophrenic or something. Something's wrong with them, dramatically, terribly wrong with them. And I also am always amused at um, how it's it's never socioeconomic causes or other influential items that cause behavior except when conservatives do it. So, believe me, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised, folks, if somebody in the Obama regime or some FCC bureaucrat or some Democrat congressperson's already written up legislation to stifle and eliminate conservative speech, and that legislation sitting in a desk drawer somewhere just waiting for the right event to clamp down, because that's what all this is, and every time this event, an event like this happens, they, they get into a trial run uh, in, in hopes that this is the one that they can succeed in shutting us all down. They can't beat us. We still have the Constitution. They can't beat us, and so they're going to do what they can to shut us down. And even if they don't have popular public political support for it, they will still try it. That's what this is all about. Now, some of the most insane, incendiary, lunatic rhetoric that you can find in American politics today is found on a website called The Daily Cause. What I'm about to read to you from that website has been pulled. But it was there as of late Saturday afternoon. It was submitted by somebody identifying himself as Boy Blue at 11.07 Pacific Time on Thursday of last week. The headline of the post is, My Congresswoman voted against Nancy Pelosi and is now dead to me. This woman, Gabrielle Giffords, doesn't even have, I mean, she's pro-Second Amendment. She was, the only thing that she was really, she's good on immigration. She's good on, uh, uh, well, the only the only thing that, that, that about her Tea Party really disagrees with is Obamacare. She's for it. But she voted against Pelosi last week when the Democrats voted on who their leader was going to be after the Republicans had elected Boehner. So here's this guy, Boy Blue, last Thursday at 11.07 in the morning Pacific time. I am from the Tucson area. I live in Congresswoman Gabrielle Gifford's district. I worked like a dog for her elections when she was in the Arizona House, surrounded by right-wing nutcases. When Arizona redistricted in 2002, a seat opened up, and she was right smack in the middle of it. So was I. Because I live in Oro Valley, Arizona, which is at the heart of that new congressional district. I was one of several people to talk her into running and pledging complete loyalty and pledging to raise as much money as possible for her. She ended up running for the first time against a fellow Arizona House member, Randy Graff, who was a right-wing wacko who advocated guns and bars and was the Russell Pierce before Russell Pierce vis-a-vis -vis border issues. With a lot of hard work and plenty of money, Gabby won. Easier than thought, too. I never like to throw money in people's faces, but I have given Gabrielle Giffords thousands and thousands of dollars in both good times and bad times for me financially. Fast forward to this election season. A weirdo named Jesse Kelly, who advocated eliminating Social Security and was a teabagger favorite, got the GOP nomination to run against her. I am gay. I had been married. My spouse left me January 15th, 2010. I shot my... I'm listening to this now. Let, let me start this again, because this has been pulled from the Daily Kos website. You won't find it there, but we've got screenshots of it. A weirdo named Jesse Kelly, who advocated eliminating Social Security, was a teabagger favorite, got the GOP nomination to run against her. I'm gay. I had been married. My spouse left me January 15th, 2010. I shot myself in the mouth in a serious suicide attempt because of that. Barely surviving, I spent two months in a hospital, and I still have some paralysis. 
I did receive a severance from my employer as I had been laid off December 2009. They may have been part of the reason my spouse left me. Anyway, after months of physical and mental rehab, I got back into the political scene. I started working for Gabby once again. I raised over a hundred grand for her. I maxed her out myself out of my severance, even though I still don't have work and could not qualify for state aid because of my severance. She wins her re-election. She told me she still has supporter of Speaker Pelosi at her victory party. We talked about how Pelosi was a successful woman and accomplished oh so much in just four years as Speaker. Today, just a little while ago, I saw an Andrea Mitchell reports out of the one eye I can still see out of that Giffords voted against Pelosi as our minority leader. Rhetorical question. I fought back from my condition. I jumped in with both feet to help Gabrielle Giffords for this crap. Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords is dead to me now. I won't lift a finger. I won't make one phone call, nor will I ever vote for her in the future. And why did she do this? Giffords never told me she was a conservative Democrat, and her voting record's okay. Damn. This is tame compared to what you'll find at this website. And they've pulled it. My congresswoman voted against Pelosi and is now dead to me. You think the sheriff might want to try to find this guy? I doubt it, because the sheriff probably agrees with this guy. Boy blue. And here's another thing. Some leftists tried to create a Facebook page, a phony online record for the Arizona shooter. The person who, I mean, it's, 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 you know it's trumped up because Palin's name is misspelled and the shooter's name is misspelled on his own Facebook page. Now, the person who posted this was in such a hurry to create a connection to the Tea Party and Sarah Palin that they ran with the first erroneous spelling of his name as reported by the Huffington Post and other outlets. And they tried to create a Facebook page as though it was this guy's. Somebody. No doubt a leftist and maybe even a daily coser. Who knows? I don't know that. Posts a phony Facebook page trying to tie it to the shooter. Jared Lochlafner likes Tea Party Patriots. Sarah Palin, it says here. He doesn't know the first thing about him. He likes heavy metal and the occult. He's a, he's a, a, a marijuana junkie and a lunatic. So here is a guy on Daily Cause who shot himself, a guy who shot himself in the mouth trying to commit suicide, survives and can now see out of only one eye, posting that Giffords was dead to him. This guy's been, I found it, anybody could have found it as of Saturday before. MSNBC, MSN, or CBS, ABC, NBC. Heard about this guy. Anywhere but us. No, you haven't. Because it doesn't fit the template. Look around the world. Who is doing the violence in Europe, for instance, right now? Who is it that's causing all the mayhem there? Leftists. Wherever there is mass violence, wherever there is mass murder, civil unrest or what have you, it's leftists. They're the ones who don't have jobs and who thus have the time.